What's up guys, welcome back. We just landed in Newcastle. We are about to kick off an epic week-long road trip adventure through Northern England. And not only are we gonna be taking you guys to some of the coolest places here, we are going to be traveling through time. So we're gonna begin at the beginning. This is episode one. We're going all the way back to prehistoric England. Today, we're gonna be taking you to Northern England's version of Stonehenge. We're gonna be checking out Celtic rock art, and we're gonna go to the farthest edge of civilization, the northern boundary of the Roman Empire, Hadrian's Wall. We should also mention that we're doing this trip in a sports car. Marco, what we driving? We got a mini Countryman, it's tricked out, it's black with a red stripe, looking pretty sweet. Good morning guys, right now it's dawn. We're walking through farmland in Duddo, Northumberland on our way to the Duddo Standing Stones. The Duddo Stones are a group of five stones arranged in a circle. They date back 4,200 years and they're somewhat similar to Stonehenge. Mm. The north of England is littered with these sort of ancient relics, uh, but we're gonna go meet up with Claire Dakin, who's the owner of this land, and she's gonna tell us a bit more about her prehistoric neighbors. So here in North Northumberland, we're in an area where there's still a lot of existing remains of very ancient occupation. About 12 and a half thousand years ago, people started to come from Northern Europe. 6,000 years ago, they started farming in this area. They started to cultivate the land. So what we know from carbon dating is that they were put up about 4,200 years ago. But it was probably an agricultural clock. The stones are set at perpendiculars to each other, pointing to the winter, summer, solstice. The reason they would want to know about those points in the seasons because particularly the winter solstice they would then be able to start counting the days to when is the optimum time to put the seeds in the ground when they would germinate and grow crops. I love sites like this because it's a place where you can quite literally see and feel and touch ancient history and you have to wonder exactly what this place meant to the people who built it. And it's kind of cool because people are actually still worshiping it in some way. If you look closely inside of the stone, there's coins where people have kind of left like a little offering to whatever spirits still dwell here. You would have had to imagine what this would have been like 4,200 years ago. It, it, it's just crazy to think that there is so much history here that it goes back so far. Now as we continue with the day, we're gonna be moving forward in history. But actually, I think next, the place we're going to next is actually a little bit older. We're gonna to go to Lord and Shaw, and we're gonna go find some rock art. So if this is what they were using for a clock, we're gonna see what the ancient Britons were doing with their free time, their creative time. Let's go. That car is definitely fun to drive on these little country roads, no? Oh, it's super fun. This is beautiful. There's very few people here. This is actually the most sparsely populated region in all of England. Uh, but we are gonna find some really cool remains of who used to live here. So we're meeting up with Pauline, who's a local expert. She's gonna show us more about the rock art and this Iron Age fort, which is right over here as well. This one that we're looking at is called the main Lord and Shores Rock and that's got a hundred different sorts of designs on it. So it's, it's the best one in Northumberland. This is the Iron Age fort. It doesn't look like a fortress, but these mounds are the old fortifications and the foundations. And everywhere where there's this heather growing used to be a house. And you can see that they actually used parts of the old rock carving from over there to build these fortifications, which would have been thousands of years later. It's kind of crazy. If you take a look around, I am like inside of somebody's old home. 
So I don't know how many thousands of years ago somebody might have been sitting here with their family. And now I'm setting up the sunshine. If these are about 2,000 years old, we're now approaching the time that we're gonna go check out next, which is the Roman era. So we're gonna head over to Vinolanda and learn more about what happened when Britain became part of Rome. To Vinolanda, onwards we ride. <laughs> We just arrived at Vindolanda. It was a fort, it was a barracks, and it was on the frontier of the Roman Empire at the time. We're also gonna meet up with Marta. Marta is a local archeologist, and she's also Italian, so she's not quite Roman, she's from Milan, but maybe she can give us some perspective on what a Mediterranean culture was doing way up here in the British Isles. Let's go. Okay, in antiquity, classic authors described the Britons as rich as hell. Uh, what the Romans found when they came here wasn't tons of silver and gold, but they found woodland and cultivable land. Um, what you're looking at is just the top of the iceberg. Underneath these layers, uh, which are the stone forts, which are dated 3rd and 4th century, we've got up to nine layers of archaeology. First ones to arrive here uh, were the first course of Tungrian. Tungrians are Belgians. They arrived here in 85 AD, um, when the wall wasn't even a project. Who lived here besides soldiers? It's actually a question I'm looking at really carefully because more and more evidence points at the presence of women. They bring their community with them, blacksmiths, spinners and weavers. So basically there can be no military without its surrounding civilian settlement. What's the coolest thing you found here? We've got a wooden toilet seat. The earliest and best preserved wooden toilet seat in the all of the empire. Still functioning? Um, I haven't tried it. <laughs> this is such an expansive site and it's crazy because it puts into perspective like how much Rome invested in Britain. You kind of think that like, oh, it's the end of the road, this is the edge of civilization. Well, even at the edge of civilization, they had this huge structure. It's really cool. Definitely not something that I expected to stumble upon up here. Here they excavated the Vindolanda tablets. They're basically like postcards they would send home. One of the Vindolanda tablets was talking about a guy getting a pair of socks underwear and sandals from his mom. I hope they were wool socks because if he was from Italy he would be really cold here. I'm from California and feeling similarly chilly. Incredible guys, we just got to Hadrian's Wall. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site, 73 miles from coast to coast and was the northernmost limit of the Roman Empire. It took three legions of soldiers to build, which was about 15,000 people in about six years. Kind of reminds me of like the, the Great British Wall. version of the Great Wall of China. Yeah, I was gonna say that, like when you're looking and you're seeing it snaking off into the distance, you know, I haven't been to the Great Wall, but I've seen a lot of photos of it and I'm feeling that vibe a lot right now. The Great Wall of Great Britain. But you have to wonder, bro, what was it like to be a soldier at Hadrian's Wall? More specifically, what would it have been like to be one of the last soldiers there, as this is the high watermark of Empire, and they're wondering whether they should stick around. Should we find out? Associus Alexander! Salutations! Hello Marcus. How are you? It's freezing cold over here, isn't it? Well, I'm warmed by my honor towards the Empire. Defend Rome from the Picts. Defend Britain. It sounds a lot more glorious than it is. Are you complaining? Well, yeah, I am. That's... Don't you feel proud? I mean, the god Mars shines his light on us. Isn't gives us power. Here? It's 
bloody dark for six months a year. It's freezing. My nipples are got, got diamonds from ice, mate. I am warmed by knowing that I serve the great Emperor Hadrian. You are a naive idiot. Are you not equally proud to serve Hadrian? Of course not. Adrian doesn't give one flying fart about me. I'm done freezing my bum off over here. Are you deserting? Only if dessert's involved. Oh my. Knowing you, you're probably already praying to the god Bacchus for a glass of wine. My turn to talk. I'm out of here. I've had enough of your crud and I've had more than enough of Adrian's. This wall's freezing. It's the end of the earth and I'm going home. See you later. This man. I don't care what he'll do. I'll stay. Vale, Britannia. I'm going home. Alright guys, well if you enjoyed that video, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to Vaga Brothers if you haven't already. And stay tuned because tomorrow we're going somewhere else. This is just the first video in our eight-part series about the north of England, so stay tuned for the rest of the adventure. In the meantime, remember to stay curious, keep exploring, and we'll see you guys on the road. Pax Vobiscum. Peace. Be upon you.